Hello everyone and welcome back to Around the World in 80 Planes and X Plane 11. For this flight I'm going from Jaipur in India to Amritsar in India in a Lockheed L-1011-150. And this is the interior. This is also from Michael Wilson. My previous flight was in Michael Wilson's 707 and uh, this came in the same package. Uh, it was a payware, uh, though it's no longer available, so it's an older payware. And uh, the Dash 150 L1011 is shorter than the Dash 500, but the Dash 150 is the one that was flown by TWA, hence the TWA livery here. I think we'll probably see one other TWA livery during this 80 flight series, uh, but this is, I think, the first one. And I do like the TWA, TWA liveries in general. So it should be a short flight. It's only about 300 nautical miles, unless something strange happens. <laughs> or I go out of my way to sightsee somewhere. Uh, we are continuing with the Apollo 12 audio. They're continuing on their way back, less than two days away from returning. Um, they, I mean, for the most part, they're just going to rest. But there is some audio left, and we will start listening to that right now. Okay, back in the exterior okay, view. Commence the charge on battery alpha. When Here we go. Battery alpha. We'll start a charge on battery Bravo, and we'll give you a call on that. Okay. Okay, now it's I've already turned down the system audio. Whoop, whoop, didn't want that. Okay. Uh, my joystick had a bad setting uh, on it. I might adjust the volume in a sec. Let me get on the way here. Oh, maybe we should fly over New Delhi. That's a little bit out of our way, but probably a good idea. It's quieter from back here. Okay, so we're delete in your flight plan. Uh, start PTC. We'll go to the antenna test attitude, which is 0, 050. 0. Pitch is 0. Yaw is 0, 069er. Your high gain angle. There's an interesting intent in the back under the yeah. horizontal stabilizer that I One didn't notice before. Use half a degree dead band. The test will last approximately four hours. Well, I gotta say, the sound is probably pretty realistic. <laughs> sure seems like it. A lot quieter okay, in here. Well, then, uh, depending on uh, when this high gain antenna test is complete, which they say is estimated somewhere. Uh, I think the engineer panel. Is currently non functional, it's just an image. At 
217 hours in the flight plan. Upper panel, something's clickable, something's not. Probably the important things for startup clickable. Okay, uh, I should have read ahead here. Those angles uh, and the stars are all the same as the one I read you for 214 hours, Dick. <laughs> he read the wrong things. Raj, and the same thing or, hours. or he could have saved himself some breath and just okay. uh, told him that he could use the same and angles. if you're unable to use any of the stars during your P-23s, just give us a growl and we've got some alternate stars picked out for you to use. Navigating by the stars again. Okay, thank you. How'd those P-23s go yesterday? Was the data any good in the back row? Uh, stand by and I'll find out for you. Twelve, Houston, uh, it was excellent data, Dick. Uh, best we've had yet. Okay. Hello, 12. Houston, if you'll give us accept, we'll send up the state record. Okay. Uh, Paul, I've got a question on that. Go ahead. We have the state vectors in there now. We have the state vectors in there now from the P-23 yesterday. Uh, and the old Vincent state vector in the left spot. Are they going to try and preserve the P-23 stuff or just go right over? It? It's, 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 I considered going with uh, Sri Lankan okay, livery. Uh, that one on the Dash 500. But looking up the particular airline, it definitely did not fly to the cities I was flying to, so... Go Just ahead. decided to go with this. That was Air Lanka. These engines sure seem powerful. You can throttle way down and okay, keep we'll climbing. Hello, 12 Houston. Uh, we can do it uh, to preserve your P-23 state vector stick, and uh, we can keep it in either slot you want. Well, maybe a little bit steep. I was checking the map. We're headed towards New Delhi. Yeah, okay, we'll do that. Uh, they're working uh, the procedures now. It's going to take a Amritsar while. Amritsar is uh, five, north of that, minutes. northwest. Okay, we'll call us when you're ready. Okay. Hello, 12 Houston. Uh, we're ready to uplink. Into the I want to be around 31,000 feet. Very good, go okay. ahead. It's on the way. No, it's not on the way. It'll be a minute while we're switching antennas. Now it's on its way. Okay, thank you. Twelve, Houston, the computer's here. Thank you. Don't know what these uh, mountains to our left are called. Apollo 12, Houston, you guys want some There's a definite news? range. Yes, sir. Send up the morning news. I okay, think uh, Sariska National Park, maybe? Or have we passed that? On how to repair, how to repair the Apollo oh. 12 lunar camera. 
was one calling for the use of a woman's hairpin. I don't know why you guys didn't think of that. From Washington, <laughs> the... We didn't have the woman. <laughs> yeah, big problem there. Besides the fact that, of course, manipulating the hairpin would be very difficult in those suits. <laughs> okay, from Washington, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee under Senator Fulbright has decided to go ahead with a series of hearings next month to help the administration determine just what is the wisest future procedure for ending the Vietnam War. Hearings will be confined to testimony on nine bills and resolutions introduced by both hawks and doves. In Saigon, guerrilla troops, I guess they're VCs, ambushed American troops for the fourth time this week, killing two GIs and wounding seven. Heavy news. Uh, I think during Definitely Apollo 11, they didn't uh, uh, say anything about Vietnam, as far as I remember. concerned about our casualties and acknowledge that U.S. commanders are sending out smaller units on sweeps. In Los Angeles, at the regional headquarters of the Alcoholism Council, a oh no, not again. Exchanging phones answered a routine call from a I should have known. Member. He pleaded with the guy, you better get over here quickly. I've taken two calls and one sounded pretty desperate. I can't talk to you any longer. There's another call coming in. The 707 also had the pressurization thing. I should have checked for that this time too. Jetliner. Will not bring immediate fair cuts until 1974 and beyond. Again, only a relative few airliners in X-Plane 11 the report cited two factors, the high actually cost have pressurization, though I suppose all the payware ones gas, probably do. The great number of seats and the amount of passenger traffic available. And from London comes word that a 21-year-old man crippled by polio when he was two will walk across the United States next summer to raise money for charity. He did this in Great Britain last year, raised $4,800 by walking the length of Britain on crutches. Oh, your LSEP news. Not a whole lot to report this morning. The performance of the central station continues to be normal. The passive seismic is, uh, they're trying to stop some long-period Z-axis oscillation. The LSM is operating satisfactorily, as is the solar wind. These are the experiments they placed the on the surface of the still moon. Got the high voltages off, continuing to operate in the outgas mode. And that's about it from here this morning. Roger, thank you. Okay, go ahead. We got your commercial this morning. Oh no, are they preparing some more music? Yeah, I think they're trying to play music. No, don't do that. I wish I didn't have to panic whenever they play music, but uh, YouTube, you know. Well, who's winding the Victrola? It sounds like it's having a hard time running there. We're getting low on that power. So to our right will be New Delhi. Try and get a little bit closer. Uh, this city that you see to our forward left is called Rewari. R E W A R I.
Hey, Pete, hold the mic a little closer. We're not reading it very well. Hey, Paul, we just take that song to uh, Saturn 507. Okay, duly noted. And the uh, high tenor was sung by Al Pete. Yeah, <laughs> I was going to say, I thought you said he was sleeping. up every once in a while. Okay, Paul, I got a question on this EMS entry test. Uh, we're on ground test pattern uh, number two, and I assume you want to run right on that one. Let's see if the flight test pattern for it. Okay, stand by. Also, will you uh, confirm your lithium hydroxide canister change? That's been done. All right, thank you. Well, Houston, uh, that's a farm deck. Uh, run it on test pattern number two. Okay, we'll go ahead and do that now. What? Right. Should be approaching the ring road that goes around New Delhi soon. Pretty uh, wide. Go ahead, well. Ring road. Uh, Quite a ways uh, away from the city, at uh, the center of the city. Right. Thank you, Dick. Hello, uh, 12 Houston. Cliff Charlesworth and his green team are going off for the last time. They said, say hey, and they'll see you in Houston. Oh, we're getting the sign-offs of the various shifts. So we're getting closer to their return. Okay, copy that. Uh, we got a little patch that's in a different season than the rest. Most of our surroundings is obviously in a very dry season. But uh, right there we've got greener pastures, different season. The city in front of us uh, is Gurugram. Okay, and in right. fact, if we were landing in New Delhi, there's Indira Gandhi International Airport right up ahead. You can see right at our nose. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 110 hours, uh, 16 minutes uh, now to the flight of Apollo 12. At uh, the present time, Apollo 12 is 135,659 nautical miles away from Earth. Its uh, present velocity now reading uh, 4,113 uh, feet per second. The Mission Control uh, Center, Houston. Pete Frank is now aboard as uh, flight director and his uh, team of orange flight controllers uh, with him at this time. The uh, Capcom position is due to be filled very shortly by Ed Gibson, who is now in the control room and being briefed by uh, Paul Weitz, who is currently on as capsule communicator. We're at uh, 210 hours, uh, 16 minutes from the flight, and continuing to monitor. This is Apollo Control, Houston. So with uh, Guru Grum under us right now, uh, right up ahead is New Delhi. Gurugram is basically a uh, suburb, if you will. The ring road sort of goes somewhere around here. <laughs> it's a little oh, bit indistinct ahead. right now. Uh, we're right over the International <laughs> Airport. And the river that goes through New Delhi is the Yamuna River. The Ganges is further to our east. That's Capcom Ed Gibson uh, getting his first morning. Oh, a little bit choppy as Apollo 12 crew. It's dealing with a lot of scenery around hours, here, I guess. Uh, 28 minutes down to the flight of Apollo 12.
This is Apollo Control Houston at 210 hours, uh, 50 minutes down to the flight of Apollo 12. We presently show Apollo 12 uh, with an altitude okay, we of are going to hang a left now. 228 nautical miles above the Earth. Oop, that's, uh, that was more, of, uh, more sudden the left than I was intending. Feet per second. Flight Director uh, Pete Frank has been going around the uh, Mission Operations Control Room uh, consulting uh, with each of his uh, flight controllers and uh, looking ahead and planning for uh, today's activities uh, with the Apollo 12 crew. At uh, the present time, we're looking for two series uh, of uh, P-23 navigational star sightings. It's got an interesting during, aspect. Uh, you can see very wide-bodied. Eight-hour shift and a uh, I want to say that probably the, uh, gives it some good lift. Very similar to that performed yesterday. We'll stand by and continue to monitor uh, the uh, air ground loop. And at uh, 210 hours, uh, 52 minutes into the flight, uh, this is Apollo Control, Houston. There is one operational L-1011 around still, and that's the one that NASA uses, or, well, I should say, Orbital Sciences uh, owns, and NASA puts payloads on to launch uh, small payloads into space that basically carries a rocket on its wing and deploys the rocket once it reaches That's altitude. At, uh, 211 That's hours, the Pegasus uh, rocket, minutes, and uh, the L-1011 is called was, Stargazer. Uh, Pete Conrad reporting that Al Bean is doing uh, some on-the-job training uh, with a computer. The uh, disc gear display keyboard uh, presently shows him in program 52, which is a platform alignment. And at this time, uh, we find Apollo 12, 133,062 nautical miles away from Earth, with a velocity reading of 4,189 feet per second. This is Apollo Control, Houston. Hello, Apollo 12. And again, to our to our right is the Yamuna River still. Say 12, we got a couple of points we'd like to talk over with you with. A few things uh, on uh, magazines, storage, and P-23s. Uh, you got about uh, 10 okay. minutes. The city okay. we're flying over is called Sonipat. First of all, uh, which magazine was used to photograph Frau Morrow on a limb activation day? Okay, wait one. And our second question related to that one is, is, was this same magazine, was this the same magazine which failed during the bootstrap photography? No, no, that, that we can answer. All the magazines are marked what they are, and Dick doesn't remember offhand now which magazine he had Frau Mara on during lab activation, but he's looking, let's see. There we have it in the flight plan. We've got some folks down here who are pretty interested in Frau Morrow. The flight plan does have a lot of blank space to write down notes in, which is a very good idea. They have no time limits. I should have probably made a detailed flight plan for this particular 80 plane flight. Would have been very interesting. I mean, no, he's not down here now, but, uh, we got the legs are all the down. There's one option oh, I that I haven't decided on yet, whether we're going to go to Jakarta instead of my original plan after we get to Singapore, but other than that, it's been pretty, pretty much how it is.
follow control. But that would be more interesting if I was like doing it Maggie continuously Maggie. except for yep. sleeping. That would be quite a challenge. That's the one that, called out for it. that was my original intention actually on Twitch doing this 80 flight sequence was supposed to be during Apollo 11 while listening to the Apollo 11 audio. Okay, understand. Magazine Foxtrot and that is the one that opened up. And there I was trying to complete all 80 flights during the time they took to get to the moon and back was the plan. Of course, doing a challenge like that, it's only really useful to try it live. I got to flight 39, but my my flying technique was poor, poorer than it has been in this series. So I decided to just quit there. It was obviously not going to get any better, as I taxed myself. I know who Shaky is. Do you know who Shaky is? He Conrad gave him that uh, nickname. Folks down here for reentry purposes would like to figure that out. Okay, we we have stowed everything. Shaky is Jim Lovell. As far as the boxes go, commander of Apollo 13. Don't know what earned him that nickname, but... In A8, in the fecal garment LCTFU kit, we have all the junk we brought back from the lab. And, uh, now, what my suggestion is on the, uh, uh, PC camera off the surveyor and the extra rock is to tie up in front of the LC bag uh, on the floor, in front of A4 and A5, rather than on the top of A1, as it calls out. Okay, Pete, do you have any sort of an estimate? Do you have an estimate of the number of pounds uh, for those rocks? Uh, the rocks probably weigh 15 pounds. Roger. What they are is four large rocks. Four are large rocks. Yeah, they're the great ones. They were, they were not, none of those would fit the... Uh, uh, I swear NASA's already trying to make sure none, none of the rocks sneak by or anything. None of the rocks get uh, sequestered by the astronauts or anything. And uh, Though I guess, you know, they could... Nah, they probably couldn't. But also probably making plans of who to give the rocks to. There we go. Um, I expect that there was a lot of demand for rocks. And they had to figure out what rocks they could give out. Pete, let us uh, run that one down a little bit and we'll be getting back to you. Okay, the other thing is, we have the two lunar surfaces that Al's in mind in the lower part of the LCD bag, and we have decks in the upper part. And what we intend to do Pretty much farmland. The uh, cities sort of blend in pretty darn well. In the lower part of the LCD bag, and we'll take decks out. They're around. You can see towns all over the place. But they're so dry looking, they blend in. Not really uh, 
paved gray except for the larger ones. Like that one up ahead at our nose to the left. That's Kaithal. K-A-I-T-H-A-L. Okay, Pete, do you have any... That one's uh, obviously got some parking lots. No, I mean, uh, you know, it's grayer. Do you have any rocks stowed directly underneath couches? And if so, we'd like to assure that you have at least a three-inch clearance. No, no, we don't have any rocks. They're, they're all in the surveyor. In the big bag, it has a surveyor camera in it, the litter tools, and the uh, extra bag of rocks are all in the, in the uh, one big white bag, which we want to put down in front of A4 and 5. Okay, and for that, you estimated the total weight of that bag is 15? Or is that only the rocks? Rock. It's got the camera, the camera, and uh, the litter tools. Okay, thank you. Honestly, what they're really trying to figure out is where stuff needs to be placed to get the right center of mass balance for re-entry. Have done and uh, the ones coming up. The latest vector shows a uh, an angle gamma of about minus 6.04. That's based on 14 hours of unperturbed tracking after dumps, purges, and unbalanced couple P23s. Uh, inaccuracy. Plan to the right seem perturbations that give us this seems angle. of a very you different have character. You demonstrated the extreme accuracy that you can get using two jets to avoid trajectory perturbations and uncertainties in our ground vector. We would like you to use balanced couples from here on for your P-23s. Also, since the use of unbalanced couples perturbs the state vector you have so accurately determined, it would be useful to see how accurately you can do the balanced couple P-23s. That's, that's a bit of a better look. It does well with some shadow on it. Apollo uh, 12 presently at an altitude of uh, 131,185 nautical miles and with a velocity of uh, 4,244 feet per second. This Took from your, uh, from your brute silence, I can only conclude that you're working up a comparable speech. No, we'll do it. No, there's no question about that. We'll do it anywhere you want to. It's not like I do a final. We're having at it again. That uh, last bit of guidance passed up by Capcom uh, Ed Gibson was to uh, do the P-23 navigation sightings with uh, four quads enabled for the bad guys. Next flight might not be quite so straight oh, as okay. an arrow as I uh, try and hit certain towns and especially parts of the Himalayas as we fly yeah, from Amritsar to uh, Kathmandu in Nepal. My only concern is the plane that I'm doing it in is a Jaguar GR1 and I don't know if it's got Roger, enough range good, uh, down here. to weave around a whole lot. I'm sure it can handle okay. 600 okay. nautical okay. miles okay. just fine. This has got a ferry range of uh, 1,000 nautical speed. miles with Let's external tanks. That, uh, we'll see. We might end up putting that to the test. We are now over now Punjab. Dick was trying to make it at a very valid point. Certainly it perturbs the vector. But uh, the next series of marks takes out that perturbation from the previous set and so forth. And if you're really doing your own math, navigate all the way down almost to entry. And that's what we're trying to prove. Uh, I think y'all are worrying a little bit too much about preserving your own sector down there so far out. Uh, we all know that doing it with balanced couples is going to make it more sporty and it's going to be more market. 
was. If I was coming home, no cop. My last worry would be determined my own state director by a dad's eyebrow. Uh, if I was going to continue those marks all the way down and just get something in. Okay, you really think using balanced couples will uh, degrade uh, appreciably the marks you've been able to get? It does in the simulator, so we'll find out up here. Uh, I don't know. In the distance, I see some suspicious terrain tiles over there. Hopefully, everything is all right. Part of the motive behind this flight is just inspecting our photo scenery. <laughs> Make sure everything is right with the world. Houston at 212 hours uh, 39 minutes uh, now to the flight. Our displays and mission control presently show Apollo 12 to be 129,817 nautical miles away from Earth. Apollo 12 now traveling at a speed of 4,285 uh, feet per second. For more than two thirds through the flight. Quiet in the mission control center, uh, we've had no conversation uh, with Apollo 12 uh, for uh, some time. However, we'll keep the line up and continue to monitor. This is Apollo Control Houston. This is Apollo Control Houston at 213 hours of 14 oh, that's quite a city. the flight of Apollo 12. Apollo 12 that, presently 128,300. That's quite a city right there. Uh, that's Ludiana. Miles away from Earth. Velocity now reading uh, 4,300 at 29 feet per second. We've been watching on our displays uh, Nick Gordon uh, performing the the uh, navigational star sighting program aboard uh, the spacecraft. We've had no conversation uh, with the crew during this uh, period of the past several minutes, uh, but we'll stand by and continue to uh, monitor, listen, and report. We're at 213 hours uh, 15 minutes, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Honestly, it doesn't look quite so big on the map. <laughs> yes, are you getting all this good data? We sure are. Okay. River to the north of Ludiana is called the Soot Ledge River. Hello, 
It's actually situated off of the river a bit. You can see there's farmland between it and the river. Star four, you're here. Star one twenty five near, and we'll have the unit vectors for you. And now eighty eight when you're ready to copy. Okay, standby. Yeah, that's a pretty darn distinct uh, city right there. Star unit vectors now in 88, ours falls. Minus 0.25472. Minus 0.78647. Minus. Population of Ludiana is 1.6 million in 2011, so probably north of 2 million by now. Maybe. Shaft line is about six degrees from the sun. Hello, Houston. I still don't have a star. Okay, take stand by. Okay, Dick, let's try uh, star 24 far. You have the unit vectors on board. That's a 2.8 magnitude. Now star 24, it's okay. I don't need the vectors for it. Star 24 was far to the right. Affirmative. Okay. Farmland below us is so close to the stock pallet that I would think that it's the stock textures, but it isn't. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 213 hours, uh, 35 minutes into the flight conversation you hear uh, discussions from Dick Gordon and Ed Gibson in Mission Control are all concerned with the uh, Program 23 uh, navigational star sighting uh, effort uh, that Command Module Pilot uh, Dick Gordon is involved with at this point in the mission. We presently show Apollo 12 at uh, two, uh, 127 Seems like uh, they've got the aerial photos of the cities at, uh, caught at a different time than the rest of the landscape. So that around the cities you have uh, have it all being more greenish because it's a different season. Over to our right you can see the same thing that we saw with Ludiana around Jelendar. Which here makes the cities stand out. Roger, Dick. That uh, star, star 125 uh, is really 15 degrees uh, shaft angle from the line of sight of the sun. Uh, I think we quoted you a figure of six. Dick, say again, we didn't copy your last comment. Oh, 
Looked up Amritsar to get some data on it. It's uh, 1.1 million in the year 2011. Interestingly, uh, Air India announced a new flight route from Stansted to Amritsar one day ago. Okay, there you are. Pretty good. I don't have enough Airbuses. That's probably an Airbus. Or is it? Maybe I should check. Okay, Dick, thanks very much. It looks good. Do you hold this attitude for about another two minutes while we finish up on the tape dome? Oh, well, Air, in Air India has a mix. It's got uh, A320 family planes. Those couldn't do that route. So it's got to be, it's got four 747-400s, 18 and 777s, and 27 787s. So I guess it'd be a 777 flying that, maybe. Presently Apollo 12 at uh, 126,846 nautical miles away from Earth. And uh, velocity now reads 4,376 feet per second. As you uh, heard uh, Dick Gordon talking on the loop, uh, Apollo 12 is nearing completion of its uh, first set of navigational star sightings. Okay, we should definitely descend we'll now. We'll shortly pick up the high gain antenna test. Meanwhile, in the Mission Control Center, uh, the recovery staff support room has recommended to the flight director that the USS Austin in the Atlantic uh, be released. The flight director, uh, Pete Frank, has concurred with this. We're at 213 hours, uh, 51 minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control, Houston. Apollo 12, Houston, we have the source configuration for the S-band test. It's uh, the same configuration which we went through yesterday. If you still have that, it's good. If not, I'll read it up to you again. I, I think we still have it, but go ahead and read it. I'll do it as you read it. Okay. S-band transponder to primary. S-band aux to tape. Uh, tape recorder, PCM analog. Tape recorder, record. S-band antenna, high gain. High gain antenna power, on. We're fairly close high to the Pakistani antenna, border here. Primary. Well, you can see the green area there, as with the other cities, Amritsar clearly has uh, been covered at a different season. Apollo 12, go ahead. Hey, Roger, we're all set now. We got the transponder primary. Now, we're looking for VIAR. There it is. Oh, we can even see the runway there. We are not flying straight in, don't worry. Tempting to shut off the engines and go all shuttle with it, but no, I don't think that'd be a good idea. We'll be running the tape if we come up with a problem. But we'll have it... Now, do they have the Golden Temple in the scenery? That, I wonder. I don't think it's particularly big. 
So I don't know how much you'll stand out. It, it does have I'm a... lake around it. Oh no, we've got a cloud layer. Uh, Houston 12. 12 Houston, go ahead. Uh, Roger, and while we're at this attitude, we can run the same test with our JDC that we That's ran no yesterday good. for you. The difference is that we're using uh, the Ring 1 needles at this, uh, the Ring 1 package at this time for I hope it's not Bombay-like in its cloud cover, or a smog cover, I don't know. Okay, let's go ahead with that deck, we're ready to copy. Okay, we're just gonna, we're aligning with the ADC at this time. Roger. Copy 049.4, 000.9, and 068.6. Well, it's a bit sad. Not getting a whole lot of sightseeing here. 12, Houston. Go. Would you put the attitude set switch to the GDC position? Oh, there's this land down there. Good times. Houston, 12. <laughs> 12, Houston, go ahead. Not great, though. Uh, Let's see, where are we? I'm uh, gonna try and loop around and actually the see the city. But I, I don't know. Try and aim for where the Golden Temple ought to be and Apollo see if it's there. Houston That's the best I can do, I think. Hours of 15 minutes into the flight. Apollo 12 now at 125,780 nautical miles in altitude above the Earth. Presently traveling at uh, 4,409 feet per second. At uh, this time, Apollo 12 is uh, proceeding. Uh, with uh, the uh, high gain antenna test, uh, a test to place the uh, spacecraft in attitude hold to obtain. Unfortunately, the, the ground textures the aren't very the distinct. There, I think they're only level 15 we'll around here. We'll continue to monitor, and this is Apollo right Control, Houston. I don't know if better textures are available. It's possible. Oh no, the uh, the well, no, that's just the build because uh, auto gen appeared. Made me think that it was more right. distinct. Could we get another reading on those GDC angles, and then after that, uh, we'd like to propose another method in order to get a little more accuracy. One of the problems we're having is well, the not the most inspiring view. Degrees, we get a lot of coupling with the other axes, and it's uh, difficult for us to sort it out and get a good hack on. Uh, what the drift rates really are. If you give us those uh, readouts. Okay, if you could give us those uh, readouts now and then afterwards uh, align the, you can use the align, uh, the attitude set to zero, zero, zero using the thumb wheels. Okay. Yaw is zero six 
9.3. All right, somewhere around here is the only Roger, site I know about. And is that is that supposed to be it? I think that's supposed to be the golden. That's not very golden right now. The scenery needs to do better. Okay, I think that was supposed to be it. I'm coming around towards the airport. Roger, standing by. Okay, hopefully it's cleared up inside. Yeah, well, uh, the clouds aren't making it easy though. This Apollo Control Houston at 214 hours uh, 45 minutes now to the flight of Apollo 12. Apollo 12 uh, continuing to accelerate uh, in its trip towards Earth. Velocity now reading uh, 440 or uh, 449 feet per second or 4449 feet per second. Correction and. Uh, don't give me numbers right now. To, uh, I've got enough numbers to deal with. Oh, there it is. 483 nautical miles above the Earth. This is Apollo Control Houston. Oh, we're not going to be able to land this time. <sighs> Alright. Try and do a traffic pattern. This is Apollo Control Houston at uh, 215 hours and 7 minutes now into the flight of Apollo 12. At the present time, the Apollo 12 spacecraft is 123,571 nautical miles away from Earth. Currently traveling uh, at a rate of speed of 4,478 uh, feet per second. We've had no recent contact or no contact for the past several minutes uh, with Apollo 12. Uh, however, the crew of Apollo 12 are continuing with their test uh, involving the uh, high gain antenna. Gotta try and keep it low. We're at 215 hours, eight minutes into the flight, and this is Apollo Control Houston. Go ahead. Uh, about uh, three, four days ago, I guess our number one urine filter stopped flowing, so we switched filters. And uh, our number two filter just quit flowing, so. We're <laughs> I tell you, life support, control. not so easy. I wonder how long that's going to work. Uh, Any good words about that? It's come to my attention recently that uh, certain people underestimate the complexities of life support. Uh, life support, in many ways, much more prone to failure than engines. Worth worth mentioning. Apollo 12, Houston. Go ahead. 12, would you start a battery B charge and also give us a readout of the battery manifold pressure? Man, this was just okay. on a, you know, 10-day mission. Can you imagine a two-year and nine-month uh, mission like to Mars and back? Uh, 1.5. 1.5? 1. 5. 1. 5. Okay. Thank you. Roger. Uh, Houston, uh, 12, would you start Apollo Control Houston at uh, 215 hours uh, 35 minutes. Now to the flight of Apollo 12. 
the Apollo 12 spacecraft uh, continuing to progress uh, down its path towards Earth. Presently, 122,358 nautical miles away, traveling at a speed of uh, 4,517 feet per second. This is Apollo Control, Houston. This is Apollo Control, Houston, at 216 hours, uh, five minutes. Now under the flight of Apollo 12. Apollo 12, presently 121,046 nautical miles away from Earth. Coming in now at a speed of uh, 4,559 oh. feet per second. Oh. Somehow this leg was a little Capsule bit shorter. Indicator Ed Gibson uh, has weird. not contacted uh, the Apollo 12 crew uh, since our last report. Uh, the crew continuing with its uh, with the high gain uh, antenna test anyway. aboard the spacecraft. Oh, no, I see the runway there. Okay. We're at 216 hours, uh, six minutes into the flight, and continuing to monitor. No, oh, no, 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 don't, don't, not that song. I think I cut oh, it short deliberately. Gosh. No, don't, don't ask them to do that. God, I'm doing a horrible job. I'm that bringing was Pete it Conrad down. Reporting rest and recreation time aboard the Yankee Clipper. Twelve. Do you have the sequence camera going? We're trying to. Back. Oh wow! The wheels are all the way down there. Okay. Say again. What's the flick in the wardrobe tonight? All right. Well, that was. I'm having a lot of these unpleasant landings recently. But uh, yeah, I blame the clouds and the fact that I'm not really good at ILS approaches. <laughs> uh, anyway. So we are here at Amritsar with barely any visibility at all. No, don't play music. P23 is the uh, star sighting navigation program. All right. So next time, Himalayas. That'll be awesome. And uh, hopefully the Jaguar will work brother, well. I think it's a good model changed, of a Jaguar. Yeah. I guess I'll take that taxiway right at the end of the runway. All right. So let me pause the audio. Shape up the misfit vector now. All right. As they shape up that vector, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.